Hi guys, this is Paul with Tweak Town. We're here at Storage Visions 2014. We're sitting down with Brian Smith. He's the manager of SSD marketing at Samsung. And he was part of a panel and he was doing a presentation today discussing some of the trends that they're seeing in the SSD space currently and what he sees going forward. So it's really a fascinating topic for us. And Ryan, if you could just give us a few words about some of the topics that you covered in your in your discussion today. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I talked about quite a few things today in uh, today's session. Uh, notably, uh, in 2013, we saw one terabyte SSDs go mainstream in the two and a half inch footprint. Now, there were larger SSDs in 2013, but one terabyte went mainstream, meaning it's shipping in a lot of volume uh, to really keep players out there. Uh, but what we see happening over this upcoming year in 2014 is two terabyte drives in the two and a half inch space, uh, mainly data center enterprise type applications. Absolutely. Uh, but uh, we see that kind of being uh, the next kind of phase, and we see that happening probably second half of 2014. But one of the key things about two terabytes, it's not just okay, we're going from you know 512 to you know 1024 to you know two terabytes and whatnot. It's not just a, a linear kind of progression. Two terabytes is kind of uh, uh, it's like a landmark occasion, if you will. Absolutely. And, and one of the reasons for that is because if you look at the system level, how much capacity can you fit into a system? Now let's just take one example. So let's say you have a one U server. How many uh, three and a half inch high capacity hard drives can you fit in that space? Four. So you could fit four high capacity three and a half inch drives. Uh, large capacity hard drives today, five terabytes max. Uh, I heard today three gigabyte, or, uh, three uh, terabytes is kind of the, the mainstream uh, mm -hmm. kind of focal point, but let's even say five. So five times four is 20. So you could fit 20 terabytes in, into a one U uh, chassis. But with two terabyte two and a half inch SSDs, you can actually fit up to 10 of those drives in a one U footprint. So you could fit uh, quite a bit uh, more of the two and a half inch drives in the same footprint. So what that means is, uh, you know, doing some simple math, you got uh, eight times uh, two, that's 16 terabytes, so fairly close. But let's even take a more realistic example. HBAs uh, are only eight channels, or you know, there are eight, eight lanes that go out SAS, SAS lanes. They don't make a 10 lane uh, uh, SAS controller. So what you could do is you take eight of these uh, lanes, you go out to eight SSDs, and let's say they're two, that's 16 terabytes total capacity. And let's say with hard drives, you put it in a RAID 5 configuration, so you're doing a three plus one, that's only 15 terabytes. So keep in mind, 15 terabytes terabytes with the high capacity hard drives versus 16 terabytes of SSD. So you're fitting more capacity with SSDs today in a one U server than you can in with the highest capacity hard drives you can buy in the market. And, and I think that we're seeing some of that pressure from SSDs reflected in the two and a half inch uh, performance segment for hard disk drives, 10 and 15K. The largest 10K two and a half inch hard disk drive on the market is 1.2 terabytes. Yeah. The largest 15K, which be, would be your performance segment, is we're setting right around 900 gigabytes right now and they provide nowhere near the performance of a two and a half inch SSD sure. so now you you know you could beat them on performance and on capacity and how are we seeing price scaling are we reaching that inflection point do you think with the wide availability of these high density solutions yeah, I think what you have to look at is uh, I mean I mean there's still a huge difference between high capacity hard drive pricing and, and any flash based technology is huge huge difference uh, but but what you could uh, say is if you look at the, the whole system, so that system I just gave you an example on where you're taking a one U server with like a RAID card and four hard drives, you have to have a more expensive RAID card and you're going to have to have uh, more of these servers in order to get the same performance that you would with an SSD. So when you look at the overall system acquisition cost, mm -hmm. an SSD based solution, even though you're looking at the SSD level, it's more per gigabyte than a hard drive, it actually ends up being cheaper acquisition cost wise. And that's what data centers are looking at. They're not looking at how much is that SSD, it's how much is my rack going to cost me? Absolutely. And, and will it achieve what I need it to achieve? Or how many of these racks will I need to achieve it? That's the thing that's going on right now. And so we have, uh, you know, I've heard numerous conversations about people talking about all flash. I mean, it's a real thing. This is real things that's happening in a business room talking about all flash technology. Absolutely. And and some of these, the demand for this is starting to create, the demand for these high capacities and more SSDs in the data center is creating an ecosystem that's 
you know, kind of evolving towards this all flash array. And that in turn places some pressure upon flash and people are looking for solutions with more endurance and that are even more, more efficient with power. And that of course is where 3D NAND steps in. Can you tell us a little bit about your 3D NAND? I do believe you're the only company producing it on the planet. So. Yeah, so uh, we've we've labeled uh, 3D NAND. We call it VNAND. So VNAND. it's yeah, so Samsung VNAND. And so uh, we we announced this uh, VNAND product uh, at Flash Memory Summit last year. So it was July 2013. And yeah, we are the first to market with that. And uh, it's a, it's a very attractive solution. It offers a couple key benefits. Uh, one is uh, it offers you more performance, which everybody loves. Everybody loves Flash because it performs really well. Absolutely. So you get that. Uh, you get lower power. So it's almost half the power uh, just by moving over to VNAND. So there's there's a lot of technical reasons behind that. But yeah, you get half the power. And then the last thing is, uh, so we have uh, uh, performance, we have power, and then we have more endurance. So you get more endurance out of this thing as well. So you're talking about it in one of the slides I showed today, uh, which I'd be more than happy to share with you. Mm -hmm. uh, if you take a look at the uh, one of the things that VNAND offers is traditionally with planar NAND, in order to get to those cost-effective points that everybody wants with SSDs or NAND, it requires you to shrink the geometry. It put all these NAND cells, make them smaller, put them closer together, but in turn, you shrink, you get lower endurance, and so people are questioning, oh, what's the next endurance drive going to be? Is it going to be enough? Well, with VNAND, you take a step back in time, so you get a bigger NAND cell, but then you stack these things on top of each other, and so instead of shrinking it down with the next generation, so to go from 128 gigabit to 256 gigabit to, you know, 512 gigabit to one terabit and whatnot, typically that required shrinking NAND cells. Well, instead of shrinking, what we're doing is stacking them on top. So the same size cells, stacking them on top. So you want more uh, uh, density, stack more layers. And so you, you get the best of both worlds. You get the density, which me implies cost benefits, mm -hmm. but you also get to keep that endurance that you're getting used to. A big topic with Samsung too recently has been your expansion into the consumer market. And with the 840 series of SSDs, and it kind of started with the 830, you guys have made big inroads into the consumer market right now people are saying they're, you guys account for about 60% of the consumer market. So in some ways you guys are driving the market and what do you guys see coming in the future and where we're going to go in the next year with with solutions from Samsung? Sure. So uh, yeah, so what, SSDs definitely in the PC space is, is the largest segment uh, for SSDs in, in the world. And two and a half inch drives have, have long played as the predominant form factor, but uh, a few years ago, MSATA came out that allowed for these ultrabook or the uh, ultra-thin type solutions to come out. Uh, one of the uh, characteristics of MSATA, though, is that it's designed for SATA-based uh, devices. So with the advent of PCIe, M.2 started to emerge. So M.2 got introduced really last year in terms of like a real productized solution. And so what I think over this next year, you're starting to see more M.2 solutions coming out, um, and especially because it has the flexibility to allow for PCIe uh, to be put into that design or into that form factor with that connector, as well as SATA or SATA Express, so it's very flexible. It had uh, that flexibility designed in from the beginning. So I think M.2 will be there. Something noteworthy, though, in uh, I think it was December 2013, Samsung announced a one terabyte M SATA device. And one that terabyte is, M SATA. Yeah, that's a pretty big jump there. That's pretty big. And so just to kind of give you an idea of how big this is or how little it is, is you're fitting one terabyte into the size of six dimes laid out on the table. So if you put three dimes in a row and put another three dimes in a row, that's taking more surface area than an M SATA device. So you're fitting more than one terabyte in the size of six dimes. That's crazy. And so that's just a, a large amount of space and a small footprint. And that's going to enable, I could imagine my tablet with one terabyte of storage would be more than I would probably ever need on that. And you know, I, I remember when I had my first hard drive, I think it was 120 gigabytes, and I went out there and I, I, I or no, 120 megabytes, sorry, 120 megabyte hard drive, and I thought, man, I will never need anything bigger, and I paid probably 150 bucks for that thing, so over a dollar a megabyte, you know, and I did, I thought it was going to be, you know, big enough for all my needs, but, you know, I'll tell you, technology changes super fast, and it's always hard to foresee what's going to happen, but let, let's just look at one upcoming example, 4K video. Absolutely. So 4K 
video is just it's humongous. So I, 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 one of the guys was talking about it today in uh, our session. And so four gigabyte was uh, like a typical HD type movie, 1080p. We're talking about going to 40 gigabytes for an ultra high def movie. Excellent. So 40 gigabytes. So I, I'm telling you, so one terabyte, I mean, maybe it seems like a large now, but two terabytes, I mean, maybe it seems large now, but it's it's definitely, we'll fill, we fill, you know, whatever we, you move into a bigger house, you fill it with furniture. That's right, yeah, so, so it, it just happens. Nowhere. Yeah. It just happens. One, one thing that was really impressive with Samsung is you guys really brought TLC NAND into the consumer space and made it reliable and good and, you know, it could, has good performance, it has decent endurance. Sure. And it's widely deployed right now. So you guys led with that deployment of TLC into the consumer space. Do you see TLC making any inroads into the enterprise space, maybe even for cold data storage or something like that? I do, actually. So uh, and so we call it 3-bit MLC. So it, it is multi-level cell, but it happens to have three bits instead of two. Um, but yeah, oftentimes uh, talked about as TLC. But uh, yeah, so we introduced that actually uh, at similar times. We introduced it into a data center drive as well as a PC-based drive. A lot of the marketing you may see or a lot of the press you may see is around that, uh, like the Evo drive or the, the A40 series drive. But behind the scenes on the OE side, which is what I cover, mm -hmm. uh, we, we're designing in our solutions into various things, so you don't necessarily see all the announcements or, or kind of get as much press around what we're doing uh, behind the scenes. So we've introduced 3-bit into the data center, and Excellent. I think it's going to be more than just cold or archiving. Mm -hmm. It's going to be where you see traditional MLC type solutions today. So the, And so, you know, we already had our first generation out there. I mean, it's a, uh, it's a pretty mature technology, and our SSD itself is pretty mature, and we've, you uh, you know, tweak things along the way to get it just right. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that that product is gonna, I think, make a, a really big dent in the uh, in the space, both in the PC space, which it already has, as, as you've seen Absolutely. and heard, and, but also in the data center side. So, I mean, there's things you could do when you control the NAND, when you control the controller, when you control the DRAM, and you have this tightly integrated solution like Samsung has. Mm -hmm. You're able to do things that others have a difficult time doing, which is which it would explain why you don't see other 3-bit MLC solutions out there today. That's right, that's very true, because you guys actually have the lead in quite a few areas. So uh, having the vertical integration and controlling every aspect of the SSD is really serving you guys quite well. That's right. All right. I appreciate your time. Thanks for yeah. stopping by the booth. Thank you. Thanks.